Hi. Over the past few years I've been creating a desktop operating system designed to use hardware efficiently, make native application development enjoyable, and most importantly to let the user control their computer and not the other way around. So I've got the installer up here on a USB drive and I'm going to install it onto my computer. Select the SSD here and there are a few settings here. I'm just going to put username in, current time, let's update that and I can choose a system font and I've got the default here which is Inter, it's a really nice font there's also Atkinson Hyperlegible and Open Dyslexic which are designed to be a bit easier to read for people who have difficulty reading screen fonts. Okay so installation is finished and so we can restart the computer just have to wait for the BIOS here and let's boot into our installation. So the desktop here is fairly minimal, we've just got a taskbar, got a power button on the right, a clock, and a button here to create a new window. And one of the more experimental things I'm trying out with the interface here is that instead of applications opening their own windows, the user opens their windows and then they can put an application inside that window. And also uh, windows can have multiple different tabs in them and you can have tabs containing different applications in one window. So if I go in here and open up uh, this text file I can move this tab into this window. I can move the tabs around, switch tabs and move the tab back out. I can do all the sort of normal things you'd expect with windows. I can snap them to the left, right, maximize and minimize. And I can also right click on a tab and move it to the right side of the screen which creates a split with the tabs that were previously in the window. So another little feature you can see here in the file manager is now that I've got this file open here it displays in bold text in the file manager which sort of seems like a really obvious feature when you think about it but all you know there aren't any desktop operating systems that actually do that. Okay, so let's take a look at what applications we've got. The first here is a game of 2048. Um, I'm not very good at this, so I won't bore you with playing it too much. But, you know, it's a standard little game. Um, then we've got the file manager. And the file manager can do all the normal sorts of things you could expect. So you can copy and paste that. Uh, you can rename files. Oh, you can rename files while they're open. So let's rename this to test, and as you can see, the other window updates with a new name. Um, you can't delete files yet, but that's a work in progress. Um, you can do things like a thumbnail view, tiles view, details view, you can sort by type, um, you can create new folders, you know, all the basic stuff. Um, and if we look at our list of drives here, we've got the installer USB here, and I want to show you what happens when I remove the USB from the computer. See the drive containing this folder was disconnected and when I plug it back in we're right back where we left off. Okay, um, I think that's everything. Oh yes, one little feature is when you look at folders here you can see that they actually show the size of the contents inside them. Um, again, another just little nice convenient feature that other operating systems don't seem to have. And yeah, let's take a look what else we have. So there's a font book here. Um, you can change the text size and the preview text and also change which variant of font you're looking at. Um, there's an image editor. Let's uh, open an image from here. Um, this one, you can pan around, you can change the color, you can uh, fill well, this is hard to fill, but you can draw rectangles, you can draw with a brush. In the color picker here, you can you know, do all the things you'd expect. So you can do a eye drop tool, take a nice blue from the wallpaper. There you go. Uh, you can drag the different components here. All the stuff you'd expect. Um, and we can, let's take a look at the file menu. We can rename the file right from here, or we can save. And um, we can also then show the file in the file manager. Um, okay, let's take a look 
Um, there's an IRC client that's written using the experimental networking stack. So unfortunately that isn't really ready for demo today. Um, now here's the POSIX launcher. We'll get to that in a bit. Um, settings. So we've got a bunch of different settings here. It's a lot of work in progress stuff, but here's the interface scale. So I can change the interface scaling on the fly to whatever I want. I could drag this even. And it all dynamically updates because the entire user interface is completely vector based. There's keyboard settings here, uh, mouse settings. You can do things like highlight the cursor when the, you press control. Um, and there's the theme settings here. So I can change the wallpaper, or I can change the window color. And I can also do things like disable animations if I want to. Okay, there's a system monitor here. Um, you can just see the different processes running and you can terminate them if you want to. Um, that's probably not a good idea. Um, there's a text editor. We've already kind of looked at that, but you know, it's got search and uh, formatting. There's also the theme design and I can show you this uh, theme here. So this is the theme that's used to make the operating systems GUI. We can switch to a prototyping mode and also look at the overview here. You know, here's the color palette and here, you know, here's, here's how buttons are made up. And you can also, if you select things, you can see the relationships between different elements in the UI to see how they are constructed. Uh, and you can also switch between an experimental dark mode, which isn't ready yet. Okay, um, right. So let's look at some of the stuff in this demo content folder here. Um, one of the things I've done is I've ported the box emulator. Um, so we're able to run uh, things, op other operating systems. And this is one I made last year in a jam. Uh, just get it drawing the Mandelbrot set here, which is pretty nice. Um, that was part of the Handmade Network Lisp Jam. So I wrote a uh, Lisp-based operating system in 8086 assembly. Uh, other things here. Ah, yes, we've got a teapot, which is being rendered using OpenGL. That's using the Mesa port, or Mesa, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, and here is uh, the Uxon emulator. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's it's running a little application here, just sort of can draw with that. Um, okay, so now let's, I think it's time we should go into the POSIX launcher. We have a optional POSIX subsystem. Um, I'm not a big fan of Unix myself, and so Essence is designed without any sort of Unix influence. But if you want to run programs like GCC, there is the optional POSIX subsystem for doing so. So I can go into BusyBox here to get a classic shell. I can list files or I can do a find. But let's go into demo content here and go into the source code because I've loaded up the source code here. So we can do basic things, you know, we can build the system. And so yeah, it's self-hosting, um, although I, I can't get it to run in box, which is a little annoying. Um, there it goes, compiling. But as well as compiling itself, we can also compile new applications. So if we have a look in here, there are a few sample applications, and this is Hello World. I can zoom in so you can just see what that looks like there. It's a very simple application, but I can go into the POSIX launcher and I can say, uh, build core apps samples hello.ini. I want you to say application. That's going to build that. I'm going to copy uh, that to the root. And if I refresh, there's our executable. And I can now exit BusyBox and I can say run our hello executable. And there's our hello world application. Okay, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show. So let's power off the computer.